Good afternoon, everyone. You made it to the end of the day, and welcome to the last session of the day. And I'm really, really happy that you're here with me today. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, first, I'll mention for anybody that came in that hasn't been in this room, these slides may turn on and off. It's apparently an HDMI connection issue, so I want to make you aware of that. They should come back on. And I wanted to start with two poll questions. So the first question is, of the people that are here, who considers themselves on the edge of tech? They're interested in learning how to make websites, write code in a specific language. Who's here like that? Got a couple? Got a couple. Awesome. And then one other question. Who, for them, this is your first mini bar? You've never been to one before. Wow, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here. This, this is just a fantastic place to be. I bet you're just soaked in all kinds of information. So let's have some more. This is actually one of the conferences I came to that really helped me get to the point where I could go for it and fearlessly achieve the goals I wanted to get to in tech. So I'm Kristen kinnear Ullman. This is my little blurb at the top is from my GitHub page. Um, and it, it's kind of misleading, right? I am a software engineer now, but I wasn't before. Um, I do do a lot of things, and I will have a slide like this at the end um, so you can connect with me later if you find this talk to be of value for you. So who is this talk for? So I'm saying it's for you, but it's actually for me too. And it's really for anyone. Anytime that you've tried to tackle a goal, and of course we're talking specifically about tech here, it's easy to not know where to start, not know how to keep going, not know when you've gotten there. And back in 2016, I'd been laid off from my job. I'd been sort of on the edges of tech for a really long time, and I was trying to find a new direction in life. And this is how I started building to the point where I can say I'm a software engineer. Couldn't say that six years ago, and I can say it with confidence now. And every day I do these kinds of steps for myself, it's easy to get derailed when you're reaching for a goal. You can apply this to anything. We're going to talk about tech today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is tackling those blocks to getting started. You're here. You've been thinking about it. Maybe you're stuck right now. What do we, what do, we do when that happens? Here's my, my butts list, probably shouldn't have called it that, but this is what we're going to call it. Um, so have you ever said this to yourself, I'm too old, I can't do it, or I'm too young, like maybe no one will take me seriously. I studied something else. I studied music. I have two degrees in music. Um, it's really hard. It is really hard, depending on what you're doing. It is really, really hard. Um, I don't have time. I already have a job. I have a family. I have responsibilities. I'm not smart enough. That one's big in tech, right? The imposter syndrome happens to everybody. But with tech, you see the smart, smart people. I'm going to put it in double quotes. And you're, you think it's impossible. Now, my slide did say, what else? Um, are there any others? Shout them out. You got a butt for the butt list. Too much competition, excellent. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. That, that is a really excellent one. Any others? Too much to learn. Too much to learn, absolutely. That can be a negative and a positive. Any others? I've never done that before. I've never done that before, absolutely. Uh. Um, in a minute, we're going to get the next. Let's see if it'll come up if I switch slides. This is really awesome. So those are awesome answers. But guess what? You are the one. I stole my Neo Matrix pictures from the internet. Please, nobody come and prosecute me. You are the one that can do this. And, and we got all the buts. I'm not going to ask you to forget them, right? They are there. They're legitimate. But what we're talking about is how do we manage day after day, every day, because we've got a goal. We've set our goal and we want to get there. So we're going to start simple and learn. Sounds simple, not easy in practice. But as you take these steps, you're going to be learning. You're going to be gaining experience that you probably have heard. You look back to the person you were 
and you're a different person now. You got to believe that. You're, you're going to put that in front of yourself every single day, and you're going to be like me. And I look back at 2016, I'm like, that person did not know how to use Git. It was quite a crazy thing. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Now they're like, Kristen, how do you do this thing with Git? I got gotcha. you. So we're going to take control and forge our own path to that goal. So how do I start? And this is, this is the, really the place that we do every day. We got to start every day with this. So my number one recommendation is to find your personal ally. That could be a spouse or partner. That could be a friend. That could be somebody that you look up to, but somebody that's got your back. Maybe it's me. Like I fully encourage any of you to reach out to me later because I've been there and I want to help you keep moving forward. Choose a goal. Like, and, and we talked about there's too much to learn, right? You got to just pick one thing. And it feels really tough because I've never done it before. Everybody's doing it. It, it can be very difficult. And this is where you're going to have to take that time and say, you know what I really like to do? I love games. And I really want to learn about how to be a game developer. Or I love uh, Spotify and I want to be able to share music with people and I, I like what they do but I, I think I can do it better and you're going to pick something I'd even pull it back further right I just want to make a site that looks like Spotify that can be enough right there's design and there's code never mind plugging in all the audio bits but finding a goal that you can drive towards know that it will take time we as human beings right we really really just want to get there I want to be able to do it. It would be so great if I could just sit down and write code like a hacker on a movie. It's going to take time. So if you're reminding yourself of these things every day, you're not going to get discouraged because you, you know what? It's going to take me some time. But yesterday I couldn't solve this problem and today I can. So look what I can do now. And that leads me to my last point here. Writing down a phrase or a paragraph that reminds you that you can do it. And so a turning point for me when I was trying to decide how I was going to pivot is I said, how did I forget this? Like back when I started being a professional right I'm out of college, I taught myself SQL, taught myself SQL. And that was before there was a lot of good Googleable stuff, right? Yeah, I think Google was around. I used InfoSeq a lot. InfoSeq? Um, <laughs> But there's, there wasn't a lot out there, right? And so to be able to get enough resources, I think I went to Barnes and Noble and got some books off the shelf, um, but to be able to do that and say, hey, I did that. Now, it might not be a tech thing. It could be, I learned how to play the piano. It could be, I was able to get onto the softball team and make a contribution. Anything where you have had an accomplishment, write that down, it doesn't have to directly connect. But it reminds you there was a time in your life you couldn't, but you can, and that's going to happen again for you. So now that we have all those, our goal, our, our phrase to reflect on, our person, our commitment, knowing it's going to take time, how are we going to reinforce that, right? Like, I did that today and tomorrow I'm like, oh, I'm never going to make it because there's too much to learn and everybody's doing it and I'm not, you know, I'm too old, I'm too young, I, you know, I just don't have time. What's our strategies for being able to keep on top of this journey? So before I started the boot camp that I, I signed up for in 2017, finished last year, um, there was some recommendations as I was doing research to look into some of the ways in which we both prepare our mind and prepare our endurance for being able to learn. Um, growth mindset, you might have heard about this, and I have a, a bunch of resource slides. I'm going to share these slides with the reference to this book. A lot of us don't realize it, but we're kind of stuck. Oh, I can't do that. Like, it, maybe if I'd started 10 years ago, I could do it. That is not a growth mindset. A growth mindset says, you know what, I can't do this. But I bet if I Googled it, or if I asked that person at work, or hey, you know, my cousin, who's younger than me, but he knows how to do it, would help me out and explain it to me, I might be able to learn it. Sometimes you have to fake this one. Like, I totally can figure this out at some point. Um, you have got to put a lot of faith in this one. But as you practice it, it becomes easier and easier to switch your mindset. I found myself thinking, oh, 
I'm never going to be able to figure this out. I'm screaming at my computer. Why can't you come up with the right algorithm for this? And I'm like, well, you know what? I didn't even know what an algorithm was like six years ago. And now at least I do know what it is. And I bet if I take a break, I'm going to come back and be able to make some progress. So keep reminding yourself that you can. Learning how to learn. There's actually a really, really popular Coursera course about learning how to learn. Somebody, Bar Barbara Oakley, yeah, Barbara Oakley fans, highly recommend this. I can't recall if you can get it for free or not. I think you can and that, thank you very much. Free course. If you were like me in school and I'm like, hey, I learned just enough to pass the test and hey, I you know, graduated high school, graduated college, graduated graduate school. Yes, I did write my graduate school papers at the last minute was a music program. Uh, sorry, State University of New York at Buffalo. Uh, you may never have learned how to learn. And it's not just sitting down and cramming your head full of facts. It's practicing. It's learning and practicing. It's practicing, and I think I have it somewhere else, but practicing your knowledge in places where you didn't learn it. So if you're sitting at your computer and you're studying a concept, then I go out for a run and I'm like, how did that thing work again? I think I like put this variable and then I add it and then I subtract. Like I have solved problems on a run, like mental chalkboard. So that Coursera course is just packed with strategies about how to learn things, commit them to your mind, and have them grow. They like network together. It's a really, really fascinating course. Um, it has a lot of cool cartoony stuff, which I touch on later when we talk about how to find resources for learning. Beginner's mind. So we're all adults here. We probably think, we're done learning, and I know everything. And then you can't do something, you're like, oh, I'm a failure. Beginner's mind, it's a very zen concept, and I have a book reference um, for this as well, says, I might not know, and I'm ready to learn. And it's OK that I don't know. Right? Kids have this automatically, because they don't. But as we get older and older, we're like, well, I should know this already. I must be stupid. Clear your mind. Leave it open and, and allow that knowledge to come to you. Don't block it. We do it accidentally. We don't even know we're doing it, right? It's like, oh, I'm never going to learn it. But that's because you're like telling yourself, I'm never going to learn it. Well, your brain can't hear anything else. Keep that mind clear. It's OK that you don't know. And it's OK that other people know. Uh, because at one point, they didn't either. And that's one of the things I always want to give back to people now that I've come along this journey. And by the way, I'm not finished with the journey yet. But there are people for whom this stuff comes real easy. And the rest of us, we work hard. And so help those people that are coming up behind you. Help yourself. Like at one point, we just didn't know. And we needed somebody to help us. So keep your mind clear for that. Don't be afraid to fail. If you remember literally nothing about this talk other than don't be afraid to fail, this is going to change the world, in my opinion. Many, many people are afraid to fail look stupid, not know the answer. To me, it's the opposite. If you don't tell somebody, I don't know, you you failed in a way that's unrecoverable. We need to know. We need to solve problems together. So if you fail, be like, I don't know. Can we figure this out? Because we know we have to solve this problem or learn this thing. So don't be afraid to fail. But right, like the Chinese proverb, pick yourself up again. Try again. The last thing, because right, there's so much to learn. You know, I don't know if I can do it. I don't have the time. Make those time blocks. Use the, if you've heard of the Pomodoro technique, I got a link for that, or the flow technique. Don't try to sit down for six hours and cram your brain full. It will not work. You will forget everything. Um, but don't also just kind of look at it and say, oh, I spent a couple minutes, so I think it's good enough. Like, yay, I read something today. Spend a block of time, and this is part of the learning how to learn as well. You need to commit to a process, a process that says, today I'm going to sit down for 25 minutes and I'm going to read, uh, I don't know, shout something out. What's something somebody wants to learn? French. French? Yes. So today I'm going to sit down for 25 minutes on Duolingo. I'm going to fight with the green owl. I, I also am on Duolingo. Um, and, but I'm only going to spend 25 minutes. Maybe that's one, you know, they've got their little uh, set of questions and I 
usually Spanish is the longest, French is kind of long too. I'm only going to do one unit. Maybe that's your flow. Um, or I'm going to spend 25 minutes working on the stories. So commit to those blocks of time. And maybe you only do one to start. Um, you don't have to be a rigid adherent to these techniques other than to say, don't just kind of give it a glancing look, right? Give yourself a chunk of time every day, even if it's only 25 minutes every day, every day you're building. And that's going to strengthen your resolve, sorry, strengthen your resolve and your mental strategies to be able to come back the next day and do it again. Tools. Define steps to your goals. You probably heard this SMART goals, um, which is good. I, I don't want to, to uh, smear it. Um, but whatever way works for you to say, my goal is to learn French. My steps are each day of the week, I'm going to spend 25 minutes looking at or working through the exercises on Duolingo. And on the you know, Sunday, let's say that's your last day, I'm also going to try to read an article or a, a children's book. Right? Pick these easy things, things you can commit to, process things. Don't say, I'm going to learn every word that I can this week. Ooh, you're going to fail. And that, that kind of failure you don't want to set yourself up for. So pick very, uh, uh, when your goal, pick some very straightforward steps that you can accomplish and you can check off your list. If you're a person that likes your Kanban board and move your sticky note, or you're a person that likes to checklist, or you got your, your bullet journal, I don't know if that's still a thing it was at one point. Um, schedule your time. Be committed. This made a really big difference to me when I had to hurry up and finish my boot camp because I was just kind of cruising and it's online. They're like, do whatever you need to do. And then they showed up in February 2020 and said, we're kicking you off if you don't get done because we're moving platforms and we're not taking any old students with us. I paid money for this. I got to do it now for real. And I sat down and I did not panic and I made a schedule. And I'm like, all right, how many units are left? How much of this do I already sort of know because I've kind of been around the edges of tech for all these years? Do I think building my first React project is going to take a long time? Yes, I better make sure I've got like three weeks to do that. But I know CSS, so that's going to take me like two days. Make your, schedule your time every day. Today I'm going to spend two hours. Tomorrow I'm going to spend three hours. So there's a little bit of math involved. I'm not super great at math. I'm really great at patterns and logic, but not math. Um, but break that apart the best that you can. Set yourself that time up. Honor it as much as you can. Sometimes it's going to happen. Something's going to get in the way of your schedule. But it's the best of your ability. Honor that schedule. Again, this is a process and it's consistency. Please, please, please take breaks. It is so easy to get into the mindset of like, oh no, I just got to keep looking at this and it'll, I'll learn it and then it'll stay in my brain and you're going to get really tired and you're not going to be able to remember stuff and your eyes are going to start closing or you think about how you could be watching a TV show or for me, it's like I got to get my run in before it gets really dark because there's coyotes on my street and I would like to not run into them. Um, Take a break. That's going to be part of scheduling your work as well. And yeah, go watch a TV show. Just don't watch like 10 TV shows. Like again, there's a lot of discipline in this because you've got a goal and you want to drive towards it. But you also can't be on all the time because nothing will stick. I can guarantee this. Uh, reward yourself. We all hear this, right? Like I, I reached a goal, reward yourself. You really should. Um, and I don't put restrictions on that. I'm a runner and I'm like, but I'm eating that big old bowl of ice cream. In fact, I'm pretty sure every time I finished a project at last summer, I'm like, you know what? The ice cream shop down the way there is open. We're going for ice cream. I think I told one of my instructors that too. I'm like, it's ice cream time. Just finish this. Um, so whatever your jam is, identify that. That's the thing you're going to want to do for your reward. And then I highly, highly recommend study music. And I'm not talking about like retro, whatever. I was going to say 80s, but now it's super retro. Um, or your favorite current thing. Or like I'm a classical musician. I don't listen to classical music when I study because my brain wants to pick it apart. I think that flute player is not playing that very well. Like that's not the way I do it. <laughs> um, I highly recommend ambient music lo-fi, um, especially if it's not one that kind of does weird stuff where it suddenly gets really loud. Um, 
bi binaural beats, bi binaural beats, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Something that's like really like at the threshold because what it does is it creates a nice little white noise for you. It really helps you focus. I see some people shaking their heads like you've done this. Calms you down too. Like when I had to do assessments on my projects, I'm like looking at like the calming pictures website with my, you know, in this case, my Aurora Borealis. This is my very absolute most favorite. When I hear it come on YouTube, I immediately go into study mode. And I'm like, I'm ready to focus now. Let's learn some stuff. Absolutely fabulous. So find your thing, right? It's going to be different for everybody. But take that time. That's a tool that's really going to help you. And you'll find it to be fun. Like I said, Aurora Borealis, like, yep, time to jam out on some studying. And focus. So we've talked a little bit before about our phrase, and I do have that somewhere in here in the middle. Um, but something that's really important, and actually Matt DeCure, who spoke earlier this morning, had called it out somewhere. I'm like, yeah, that's it. Um, if you're not there yet, don't say, I'm on my way there. Say you are there. Right? This is just like you know Tiger Woods or whoever visualizing their shot. or, or you know, pick anything. Everybody's talked about visualization. Say, I am a, I am a software engineer. I am a person who can speak French. I am a person that can build a website from scratch. That, that validation to yourself keeps telling your brain that you are, and you're not gonna kind of be half-hearted about what you do. You're gonna keep driving towards that, because you are. You may not know how to do it yet, but you are. So you're getting there. Super important. Um, seeking out the positive. It is super easy to tell yourself you're stupid. I'm sure we all have. I mean, maybe somebody hasn't, but I think most of us have. Um, I always turn around and try to find a positive for every negative I run into. Oh, I can't solve this coding problem, but I think I understand it, and I think I can find a resource, and then once I learn it, now I know that. You know, and that, again, that takes practice. Like, you gotta kind of trick yourself into doing that. It's like, how can I think of this as positive? And not fake positive either, right? Yay, I love this, this is the worst thing in the world. Nope, your brain hears that, it's not going to, it's not gonna let you translate that into success. But try to find a way, right? The classic for developers is new error, right? I had this error, and I wrote some code, and I got a new error. Yay, I solved the last one. Hopefully it's not worse than the first one and just buried the other one, that has happened. But um, that is very much along those lines. So try to find the positives that's gonna keep you driving forward. Be aware and notice when you're getting tired. Very, very important, mentally tired. Again, falling asleep, eyes coming off the page. Um, right down at the bottom, it's okay to stop for the day. Stop, regroup, be ready for tomorrow. Don't kill yourself because you're just going to, you know, you're going to put yourself in a state where you're not going to be able to function very well. You refer to your statement and check in with your ally. Resources. This is actually still a difficult thing, even in the age of infinitely Googleable stuff, maybe because now it is infinitely Googleable. I, mean, I started looking at this stuff back when everybody was first learning how to do websites, and it's like, I don't know where to find that. Um, I got this WYSIWYG editor, um, and I'm going to see what it does. Um, so the important thing now with this multitude of resources is finding out what works for you. So I have some attributes here, and the one that I'll highlight is the informal versus formal, although you can see the rest here. Um, my example is I wanted to learn a little bit of Java just so I could understand it and kind of say, yeah, I've seen Java. And so I'm looking at a bunch of websites and it's like, I don't know, like I, like I see these like namespaces with all these dots and I don't get any of this. And then I found codegym.cc. Anybody remember or have seen the show Futurama? Imagine characters that look like they came out of Futurama. It's like a robot they're teaching Java to, and there's like Captain, you know, sparkly teeth, and I don't remember the names are, and then there's like a mad scientist who comes in and says, robots can learn Java, and the robot's like, I don't know, because you're the robot. So for me, I'm like, hey, this is fun, I like this, and it just instantly made it more connectable for me. Um, you may also have heard this, the site Pluralsight, very popular technical site. That's a lot of people just talking at you. And they don't stop and let you kind of work code examples at the same time. And it can be a very valuable site. In fact, one of my favorite database guys has a bunch of courses on that site. And I love listening to him talk. He's from India and he just pronounces things in a way I, I just absolutely love. And he's really smart too, so it's like I'm learning and having fun. But most people are just talking at me on that site. Unhelpful. 
So I do have listed in my resources a number of sites that I personally find really like interesting, modular. Um, they have that, that ability to help you learn how to learn because they're teaching you a concept and practicing it and then coming back later and tying it together. Um, so for me, those work. For you, you might like something different, but it's super important to find the thing that helps you learn the best and keeps that knowledge in your brain. Um, so don't just take stuff on spec from people, right? Hey, the greatest site in the world is blah, blah, blah site. Might not be your thing. Um, W3 Schools is out there, has tons of stuff, but maybe that's not enough information for you. Maybe you want a cartoon about um, how to write in Go um, with a little gopher running around, right? So, so look at those things, but if they don't serve you, don't feel bad. You're, you're finding the coach, the resource that works for you personally, and it's not going to be the same for everybody. Also take into account what you already know. That's how I chose to do an online boot camp. I knew I knew HTML. I knew I knew CSS. I knew I could get through that part really fast. What I needed somebody to tell me to do was how to really, really do object orientation. So when I did the early parts of that boot camp, I'm like, yeah, I can get this done in 30 minutes. Whee! And then I got to object orientation, I'm like, ooh, can I do this? I sit in Starbucks yelling at my computer. This is before the pandemic. <laughs> so I left myself a lot of time, but I didn't like spend a lot of time. And if I'd done an in-person boot camp, maybe there would have been two full days on like one selector. Like, oh boy. That, that takes a long time. But if you don't know that stuff, you do want to make sure you've got enough time to learn that. So if you do know some stuff already, make sure that you don't spend the extra time over learning it. That's, that's also from Barbara Oakley's course. Get out there. You got step number one for those that are new. Get to the conferences and events. Hear people speaking. Listen for other events that are out there and, and make, you know, make a commitment to go to them. Look at online events, like that's super popular now, and especially with people moving here, there, and everywhere. Um, one of my mentors from work lives way out in northern New York, and like the nearest place is Vermont, but he's got to travel around like a really big lake to get there, right? Virtual events are very helpful there. And be confident. It doesn't look like any of you have that problem, but when I started out with this, I was like, oh, I don't know anything. I am really, like, I, I know how to write some SQL. You know you, you know you don't know everything, but come in and be like, hey, can you tell me about, where did I go to today, the graph algorithm. Like, can you tell me a little more about graph algorithms? I'm not really sure what they are, and I'm kind of interested. Here's my experience I've had in the past. Does it link up? People, for the most part, are willing to talk, and if, if they're not, that's okay. Go and talk to the next person. So you belong here and wherever you are, so always carry that with you. Sometimes it slips. And finally, Mr. Rogers, find the helpers. Um, I couldn't resist this one because this is super important to me. One of the reasons that I've been able to do as much as I have been able to do is from people that were willing to support me. So like Matt DeCure, again, to name him because he spoke earlier today, just like he remembered who I was and he was always really supportive. Hey, Kristen, at conferences or Joe Carlson is somebody who's super big here in Minnesota Tech and spoke last week at a conference and he's like, yeah, you wanna learn functional programming? Here's my GitHub where I teach it. Um, and you know, follow him online and you know, ask him questions. Um, Ian Coldwater, who is just absolutely phenomenal and who I did a hackathon with, um, they weren't able to be here today and I mentioned that I was doing a talk and the first thing they wrote back to me was, you've got this every time. And when I started down this journey, I said, I gotta be that person. When I get to this point where I have something to teach to people, I wanna be your person. I wanna tell you, you've got this. I want you to know that you can do it, just like they've done for me. So look for those people, they might be at your work, they might be in your personal network, they might be somebody you meet here today. Look for the people that are interested in spending that time because sometimes people don't have time or they just aren't willing to invest the time and that's okay. Also look for the people that speak the best to you. So for example, I know two super smart people. One of them just can't get a good explanation out of them. I know they know a lot of stuff, it's like a little lock box, you just shake it and like there's stuff in there. Um, <laughs> like, but I can't figure out what it is. They're not really good at explaining things. And then there's another person who they're like, well, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah. I get what you're saying, oh, fantastic. 
So find the people that speak to your brain. This is very similar to finding that training that works for you, right? Not every person that knows things is gonna be able to tell it to you in a way that you personally understand, but you want that person because they're gonna help you grow. You're probably gonna help them grow. You learn when you teach other people and that's like a really important thing to do as you're learning and growing, keep giving back because what you have other people need. How do we get wins? Big and small, small is important too. So progressing from confused to confident. Know that you're not going to always learn in a linear manner. We forget this. It's leaps, it's iterations. When I showed up at my first hackathon one month after I was laid off from my job, I'm not gonna lie, I was 40 years old. I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> I don't know, I was managing people, but I think I really wanna like learn how to code for real and not just my SQL stuff, which I love. Um, and so I sat down with a group of ladies, ladies hackathon, and they're like, yeah, just use Git. How do I do that? Well, I use this little tool. Well, I use the command line. I'm like, command line, didn't we get away from that? Like, I've been using my mouse and Windows 95, and Windows 98, and Windows XP, and Windows a million. Um, and you're using a Mac? Whoa, like, I didn't know you could do, you couldn't program on Macs back in 19, whatever. Um, <laughs> But over time, I started Googling. I found, I'm going to say this, it's going to be bad. If you've ever seen Oh Shit Git, great website. There's also a clean version of it, which I think is the same thing. Like, here's what you do if you got in trouble with something you just did. Now, for me, that's usually just recloning. Like, oh, that wasn't right. Just let's blow that away. I got the command for that memorized now. But over time, I practiced, like, how do I, when do I do an ad? When do I commit? Rebase, nope, not doing that yet. I know a smart person who's good at explaining things who I'm going to ask to explain to me. I get it, but I want to have help. Um, so keep iterating on that learning. If you don't get it the first time, Google. Ask a person. Keep practicing, right? Here is my repo that has nothing in it except the file I keep adding one word to. Now, what am I supposed to do? Add, commit, push. Good. How do I get it back? Pull. But all of that is practice. Like, I could not do that in 2016. I couldn't do it in 2016 May. I couldn't do it in 2016 September, right? It took time. So know that that's there. Rubber duck, may have heard of this. Or just explain it to yourself. What's super awesome is you're like, I'm having a problem. And you're like, you never say it out loud. And then you, you grab somebody, your mentor, your coworker. Maybe you get to a stack overflow and ask a question. And as soon as you do that, you're like, oh, I know what the answer is. Because now that I actually said it out loud, it's like, oh, my brain connected, yay. Um, and even if you didn't, you may also have found more pieces of the question too, which are gonna be really important for the person that might be helping you. So make sure you do that. Seeking out examples with solutions. I really hate places that are like, solve this problem. Super, it's wrong. Can you help me? Because like, I'm not trying to cheat. Nope, just figure it out. That's not going to help me. Um, one of my favorite places is I'm, one of the things I'm working on, one of my goals is learning data structures and algorithms and being able to solve those problems. They're, for me, they're hard. Um, it's not my thing I came from, so I'm trying to learn. Leap code is actually the very best place to do that because you can go and look at people's solutions. Now, not everybody writes a good answer, but some people do. JavaScript answers for this particular thing. Oh, I see what they did. They did this and this, and they explained it. I don't just have to like look at the code and be like, well, I already didn't know what the answer was, and this isn't helping. Um, I first did this. I then did that. So it, you can work on hard problems, but it's really helpful until you learn to find ones that have solutions you can actually understand. And then practicing that recall. I'm in the shower. What did I do to solve that Fibonacci thing? I'm like, what's the Fibonacci? Like, and I probably should wait till I can get out and write it down. But in different locations, you're doing practicing that recall. It actually strengthens your learning. It helps you to be able to, in any situation, write stress question. You're at an interview. Now you've learned enough of the tech you wanted to to go get that dream job. And they ask you the question, like, oh yeah, Fibonacci sequence. I know what that is now, and I know how I wanted to solve the problem attached to it. So much easier if you're always kind of recalling that. So instead of scrolling your phone, if you're on the bus or the train or somebody's driving you somewhere, um, maybe think about a problem you solved recently and talk it back through in your head. Cements those solutions, the answers, how your brain got there. Just make projects. Anybody heard this one and you're like, 
Uh, I don't know how to do that. Just clone Facebook. Just clone Spotify. Um, it is a good thing to practice the thing you're learning by making some kind of project, but if it is not something that you personally connect with, it's going to be really hard. It is so much easier to be able to say, for my example, one of my projects ended up being tracking race information. I run marathons. And when I worked with my instructor and he came up with it, I'm like, well, yeah, because you know what I want that to look like. Never mind the code, right? I, I want that to be, I can enter in all my information the way I want it. I want it to calculate some information like I'm not in the lower 30th percentile in this race. I made to like in the middle. Um, and I want it to be, I want it to look like these kinds of colors. Now I know what I want it to look like, and every single decision I make with the code and the data is going to be based on the fact that I know what I want it to look like. And I care about it. I don't care about Facebook. I mean, I care about Facebook, but I don't care about Facebook. I don't need to build another Facebook. I'm leaving that for somebody else. So try to find, and it can be tiny. Like I'm gonna, I made for my husband. He's like, I want a timer that only counts down in minutes. Even if it's like two hours, I just I want it to all be in minutes. I'm like, I know what that looks like, and I know how to do a timer, and I'm going to get it to be in the center of the page. I cared about that, right? I care about him most of the time. <laughs> I care about him. I understood what he was looking for. I knew the things that I wanted to do to get there, and I was able to put it on the page. So ask around, right? Your ally, anybody you know, like, what little thing can I make for you to practice my skills? And it's not going to be perfect the first time. Use what you have, second point there. Um, don't try to learn a bunch of new stuff. Um, if all you know is HTML and CSS, use that. Maybe you can like put a little JavaScript in. Maybe you know a really fancy framework. Maybe you're going to build a database. But you don't have to do that day one. Start out with, I have um, a website that helps ham radio operators remember the letters of the ITU alphabet, because I can't remember, because I'm a ham radio operator. I'm like, ah, uh, what's R? can't remember. I build a little website that pops up R with Romeo. That's the letter. Um, but right now, the database is just a file. Like, that's all it is. Um, could I build a real database? Sure, I could. Could I record some samples so you can hear people pronounce the words? I could, but I haven't done that yet, and I will, because that's a project I'm still working on. I got to the minimum viable product, right? It works. It's got some letters you can look at it. They're all there. Also cover all parts of your project, because if your plan is to go and look for a job as a front-end engineer, a back-end engineer, a full-stack engineer, or really anything, practicing the skills right now to say, this is what this is about, this is how I did it, here's an example, you're going to have to do that. And the people that do that have a better opportunity to make connections than those that don't. This is super, super important. I know this, I've got tons of information, but this one's so important. I really, really want to highlight it. Please write about what you learn. Notice I said learn, not know. What have you learned? This is a requirement they gave us in our boot camp as a postgraduate. And they're like, you have to, for whatever the period of time was, every single week, write, do some work, write a blog about what you learned. And why this is important is because you are you and you think in a certain way. And guess what, there's a bunch of people out there. Remember we talked about finding people that can explain things to you. You're the person that can explain something to somebody else about what you did. And if you don't get out there and write it, you're, a bunch of people aren't gonna know that information. And yeah, there's so much out there who had the, um, everybody's doing it. Somebody back there had everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it, by the way. There's like a million articles about, about just about everything. But not every everything. And even if there is, if you write that blog article, someone who needed it explained the way you did is going to see it and their life is going to be transformed. And I'm not overhyping that. That is true. Because you're going to help them. And it's going to bring that information to the top of the Google search results because now there's plus one. And if no one has written about it recently, there it is. I mean, I can't tell you the number of things where I'm like, how can I not do this in SSIS? That's what sequels everything. Um, because nobody wrote about it. I'm like, I'm going to write about it now because somebody's going to have to do it at some point. And now there's one more article about it. It can be simple. Like, really, like, this is how I remembered how to, like, fix my login to a bash on Windows subsystem for Linux. That was really hard to find when I needed it. So I wrote an article. It was very short. Um, include images if you can. Code snippets. Really important. So don't just word. Also give a demonstration, that helps. Some people are scanning for that, and you're going to help them. Find places to post your blog. 
do it in public. Like I have my own site as well as I cross post on Dev2 and Hashnode. People are going to find that and you're going to help them. Like you can keep it to yourself. You can tell your friends and buddies, but just put it out there. Like if you're embarrassed, don't worry about it because nobody else, everybody else is like, my article's so bad and no one's going to look at it. So we all feel that way, right? Like this happens in all parts of our life. Um, so advertise that. I tweet mine. I link in them. I'm like, people are going to think I'm dumb because I'm writing about something pretty simple. But you know what? Maybe they don't remember it either, or maybe they never knew it, and now I'm helping them out. Um, continue to work on your writing style. Like my blogs sometimes have like a couple of paragraphs at the top. I'm like, maybe I don't need that many paragraphs. So I keep working on it. I'm not stressed out. I'm like, as long as it has everything spelled right, and I'm not having the wrong information about how to solve a problem, very important, um, then it's good. And handling comments, people are going to comment. I, I think I wrote one about how GitHub used to have master as its branch, as the trunk branch, and now it's main, and a lot of that got removed because we're trying to be better about how we refer to things and not have connotations that aren't great. And somebody's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't believe in that. Or, well, in our country, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ooh, I'm just, I'm not going to touch those because that's very, very explosive. Um, they may have some points, but it's better to just kind of let some of those, I can't believe how dumb that is. Just let that pass you by, like everybody's going to have their take on things. Go ahead and keep getting it out in the world. Now, if it's something that you really do need to be sensitive about, you know, have somebody else look at it. But if it's like just explaining a thing that you know is factual, someone might have an opinion on that. Don't take it personally. You're, you're learning. If there is something to correct, correct it. Networking and connecting, super, super important. So online, you've heard a lot of people speak today. Connect with them. Some people might not connect back, but a lot of them will. And you know, many, many people, we have just such an amazing community here in Minnesota where they're interested and want to help and they're always giving back. I see this person in the front with Prime. Prime like does things all the time, or at least before the pandemic, right? Obviously, we've got that to consider. But like everybody that comes out of Prime, they come out and they're like, how can I like help and like talk to people and teach them stuff? And Minneapolis Junior Devs was part of the Prime ecosystem. Like so many resources follow people. They're going to be out there talking about things and you're going to continue to learn from them. I actually have sent messages to speakers. I went to Open Source North two weeks ago, and I went to a web, uh, web observability, and the speaker said, oh yeah, have you ever gotten that error where there's like a left angle bracket? You know what that really means? That means you're talking to an API, and it, didn't, it sent you back a web page instead of data. I was like, oh, whatever, everybody knows that. But then the next day I went to work, and I'm like, why isn't this site working? It's, like, it's got like that, and like it's got that angle bracket. I'm like, wait a second. So I go out to the endpoint, it's a web page saying, this API is down. You might want to contact the help desk. I'm like, it's 5 o'clock. But at least I know that that, way, that endpoint's down, and I can contact the help desk tomorrow. Well, it's back up the next day. But knowing that kind of thing, and I wrote to that person right away. I'm like, oh, you saved my life, because I would have been sitting until like 6.30, you know, pulling hair out on a lot left to pull out. It's all gray already. Um, so reach out to people. They want to hear about that. Or if you're like, man, I didn't understand what you said, or I disagree with something. Be tactful, but this is how we create relationships and learn more from each other, and that's really important. And also, one of the things that I learned from my boot camp postgraduate requirements was reaching out to people. Now, they had us reach out to like eight people a week. <sighs> like, I'm a really friendly person, but that's a lot of people. I don't know any of those people. Um, and this takes a little bit of guts. We're building guts in this process, right? You might already be that gutsy person that's good at this. My mentor told me a story about a friend of his who, oh geez, we're running short on time, um, who just reached out to a CTO of a company and was like, hey, can we chat sometime? Maybe you're not that person. That's not me either. Um, but try to reach out to somebody. I'm interested in being a UX designer. Hi, I see you're a UX designer. Would you be interested in telling me a couple of things about, you know, I'm doing this and this. Does that make sense for a path to learn? In person, we're doing it now. Engage with each other. Try to find somebody to talk to. That, you know, that can be hard, but if they, you know, you like their t-shirt or you heard them speak and you see them like hanging out, like, hey, do you mind if I interrupt you? I really liked your talk. 
Um, make sure that you're following up with those because otherwise networking is awkward and you're just trying to find a job or pump people for information. Um, try to make it as genuine as you can. And usually that you will be doing that because you're looking for the people that have the cool t-shirt or you just heard talk and you really enjoyed what they had to say. Um, make sure you stay connected with them. And in our last minute, to be continued, why? Because we're not there yet, just keep swimming. Keep going towards your goal. Like that was just a whole bunch of information. Start incorporating those things in. Keep taking the steps. I do channel Dory. I'm like, I'm just going to keep going because I'm going to get there. And you know that, remember, because you have your phrase or your paragraph that reminds you that you have in the past gotten there and made that goal. This is just a new goal. Be kind and gentle with yourself, right? Don't, don't not take breaks. Um, make sure that you are reaching out to people and not being afraid to fail, but be persistent and gritty. Don't give up, you can do it. Any achievement that you have is gonna contribute back not only to yourself, but to your community, to the people around you, maybe even to the world. So I've got in my slide deck when I get it posted, I've got all these resources we talked about, lots of things that I like. Remember, don't take them on spec, check them out for yourself. And finally, if you want to keep in touch, that QR code is to my blog. Also, I have my GitHub and my Twitter. And I would love to be the person to encourage you. I've got a lot of you got this is from Ian to pass along and from others. So if I can do anything to help you on your journey and get you to the point where you can give this talk, maybe you can give this talk in three years' time, two years' time, one year's time. Flip this real quick. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate your time.